bonus episode, I wanted to talk about upgrading your Ruby version in your Rails apps. Now, as you can see here, I'm currently on Ruby 3.2.1. We can run Ruby-V to see that. And we can also output the file contents of dot Ruby version, Ruby 3.2.1. I'm gonna open up our editor. And Ruby 3.2.2 was released with a security fix um, for some things in Ruby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and edit this. We don't need that Ruby dash at the beginning. Um, that is if you wanna use some custom versions of Ruby. Um, we don't need that, we're just gonna use the basic Ruby that everybody uses. And we're gonna change the file version to 3.2.2. And then we're gonna go into our gemfile.lock and we wanna change this 3.2.1 as well. But what I'm gonna do is use a uh, version matcher here. So we're gonna be able to use Ruby 3.2.2 two, three, 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 four, and all of the security and bug fix versions underneath. So that third version is gonna allow it to be changed as well as this middle version. So whenever Ruby 3.3 comes out, um, we'll be able to use that and we won't have to edit our gem file again to do that. This Ruby version file should be specific though. It should be exactly the version that you were working with and testing with. So we want that to be the exact version. So then if we go back to our terminal, I'm using ASDF, which we can see if we run which Ruby, it will tell us that we are using ASDF for managing our Ruby version, um, which you should be using as well, but you might be using RBM or RVM or CHRuby or another Ruby version manager. Um, those are fine. You will use the same steps for this, except for installing that Ruby version. We will use the ASDF command to install Ruby 3.2.2. I've already installed that previously. It will take a minute to compile on your machine. I've already done that, so we don't have to wait for it. And you will now see that our Ruby version is 3.2.2. We can run gem update dash dash system anytime we want to update our Ruby gems versions. It's a good habit to get into, especially when you install a new version of Ruby. Go ahead and run that. Uh, that will make sure that you have the latest bundler. So we will run that because the gems were previously installed on the old version of Ruby. We just wanna make sure that all the gems are now installed on the new version of Ruby. And then we'll be good to go. So we'll be able to run our Rails application with that brand new version of Ruby once these finish installing. So there we go. We can go run bin dev and it's going to install the Foreman gem which was not previously installed or was previously installed, is not installed on our brand new version. And Foreman, unlike most gems that you want to put in your gem file, you want to install Foreman globally so it can run your uh, code without having to be a dependency. Um, so that's already done for us by the bin dev script. And now we just need to uh, basically stop our other Rails server. I had it running previously, so we're gonna uh, off screen turn that off, and then once it's done, we can run bin dev, and uh, port 3000 should now be available, and there we go. You can also verify that you're using the correct version of Ruby here in Puma. It will print that out and say we are using 322, um, and we are good to go. So we can open this up in our browser, and now we have our blog running on the new version of Ruby. And then we can just stop our server, run get status, we can run add-p, add those changes and get commit uh, <coughs> Ruby 3.2.2 and push that up. And because we've wired this up to auto deploy on render, we can go back to our render application. You'll see deploy started for that commit, which is Ruby 3.2.2 and then our deploy is live now uh, after a few minutes. And we can even confirm this by clicking on the logs. And if we look at those Puma logs, it also prints out Ruby 3.2.2, so we're using that in production. Now, Render and the hosting services will be the ones responsible for doing the installation of Ruby on your production environment, so you won't have to worry about this yourself. They should be able to detect it and uh, install and deploy that code for you, and all the rest of that is you, once you have the programming language in the right version, you run bundle, you do those steps that we talked about under settings for the deploy 
build command. So this is where we run our bundle install, or pre-compiled assets, and uh, so on. So that is all done for us, and now we can check out our render, blog, and production. Now another bonus episode that I want to talk about is our blog is eventually going to have lots and lots of blog posts and right now they would all be displayed on a single page. So I would like to add pagination so that our blog has multiple pages on the index and we can uh, you know, go through those different pages as we add more and more content. So that's what we're going to do in the next video.